Well, well, well. All right. Thank you for joining me. Again, DJ Dab, aka The Last Dragon, to my uh, personal stream on, you know, a little bit of knowledge, science, wisdom, understanding, and topics of that nature. But thank you again, my cosmic kinfolk, for dialing in to my um, cosmic streams here. And uh, kind of like, you know, today's kind of a big deal. I'm going to go down a path I haven't done in um, in a long time. I did this on uh, my um, older channel. It's funny, I'll call it my older channel, DJ Dab. Um, I did that on my other channels, Occupy Your Third Eye channel. Okay, that's deep, I know. But it's, it's in the description. You can find a link to the Occupy Your Third Eye uh, YouTube channel. But I did a long description video there of some incredible things that I discovered while in Long Beach about masonry, about um, telepathy, about about a lot of topics that just made me understand that, you know, um, the shamanistic world was very powerful in a way of life. And there were a priesthood that was definitely... <laughs> Uh, down to make sure that no one rose in the ranks of true understanding um, without uh, having their light put out. And anyway, but um, that's a deeper story for why the way of the dragons is very important. Because um, I feel like this information, for one, is pretty damn cool. Um, it's, it's very shamanistic. Um, but it's new age shamanistic, if you want to call it that, where uh, I'm going to just really decipher things that have been shown prior, okay? But in the interpretation of what was missing, again, um, from my viewpoint, from my standpoint, from, from what I can see. So the way of the dragons is going to be a revealing, in my opinion, to unified mind science that I'm just so excited to get into. So I think I'm just holding things up by uh, by sitting over here. So let's see here. We can change you guys to like that. All right. So here we go. First and foremost, please realize that <laughs> this is top secret. Okay. And I want you to stop. If you're not supposed to be here listening to the revelations of a celestial shaman, then get the fuck out and buy. This this is top secret stuff and you're going to learn the secret thoughts of people. So if you have any qualms about that, stop and get out now. Because I'm going to keep moving. Back to the lecture at hand. One science. Which is a knowledge practice. Two science. Which is a wisdom practice. Three science. Understanding practice. Will get us to our. <clears throat> unified mind. Our ansar. The great ancestor. The great, great green lizard looking man ancestor. No, um, but you know, um, Osiris or Ansar or however you want to call him. When, when you're examining, you know, deep things about Egyptians. Sorry, Kemet. And it's love of certain things that were just plain and obvious but never talked about. And to be honest with you, that's just numbering, their numbering system. I mean, I don't really think anybody really says too much about why the Egyptians count and why they make their counts. So we're going to use that knowledge here to move ahead and uh, go into what Ansar represents, the guardian energy. It's going to be, in my breakdown, a guide to ancient rites, death, incarnation, and new life. Okay? So, guardian Ansar, or Asar, I'm, I can't believe I was saying that wrong, 
is your inner man, your inner temple's light. And it's going to keep you guided along this path as I walk you through what every guardian knows, what every Christ-like energy knows, what every Osiris knows, okay? And when this energy becomes prevalent throughout the collective mind of the humans that, you know, walk this planet again, in a more prevalent way, like in a vast prevalent way, which we're not even close to, then we reach closer to the higher states of evolution where um, people aren't being mind effed as much and people aren't being um, bombarded with um, hypno hypnotic states and being able to be taken over and just abducted mentally, abducted totally mentally, okay? Because this is a form of alienism to have reached a level of your guardian brings you to an alienism and each and every one of us are supposed to be alienated from our fellow persons and families and friends who are under the hypnotism, okay? And that's just the way it is. Things will always be that way until there's generational cycles and things are moved through good reveals. That's the best way to put it. Very powerful reveals. So, um, yeah, let's dig a little deeper and let's uh, let's see what we're going to do about this. This uh, The power of the number. You know, the power of the number, guys. I talk about this in a lot of my lecture uh, prior to this one. Um, I break down the 13 signs of the zodiac, you know what I mean? Just to give a, a recount to why the 13th number was very important. Um, I won't review that here, but I want you to think about that. If you can go back and review those lectures, that would be very important. There's other good things out there about the numbering system I talked about. I gave you basically um, the Supreme Mathematics, which is a very interesting and very, very absurdly, absurdly accurate way to describe the universe metaphysically around you. Okay? Um... And I mean, big or small, from the from the macrocosm to the microcosm, I'm, you find that the power of numbering is great. It's it's in an art. It's almost in ritual. Um, the power of numbering is going to really, really stand out as we go further and further down the idea of what it takes to have a unified mind. Because we're great counters. Um, we're doing it subconsciously all the time. We're bound by numbers, right? Um, you have ten toes, ten fingers, two eyes and nose, with two nostrils. You know what I mean? You, you have to have descriptors. Num we're bound by our number system. And um, we use it to v convey science. So I, even right there, I was just describing my body. But in any scientific description, that would help. You, you know, know that you were, I was describing a human instead of like a spider, right? And, you know, numbers rule the world in that sense. That they describe a lot of things very succinctly and to a formula and to a very powerful, deep resonance in the structure of the human being. Okay. So if you're following me and you're liking what you're hearing, I want you to get ready to, for one, excuse me for having to scratch my eye, be struck by a little bit of lightning here, okay? Because um, before I go to this next slide, let me just say, you know, do you count, do you do, do you take the time and like when you're looking at artwork like this, do you count, do you count the number of blue um, stripes on the cane? Versus the number of yellow stripes on the cane. Can you even do that because his hand is obscuring some of that? Do you count the black squares on this chair around the edges? Do you count the amount of blue blocks here? Do you count these things? Do you go one, two, three, four, five? That's five. That's five blue blocks, okay? We're going to begin using that five, that power number. 
because that's what five means in the supreme mathematic, is that he's sitting on the seat of power, right? With understanding, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Um, but anyway, and his feminine, you know, side is always there protecting him and as a rock that he can lean on. It's amazing. But there's numbering systems all throughout this image that would blow your mind. Um, there's so much science and wisdom in these numbers. Like what I just showed you again was that he's sitting on the seat of power because that's five blocks high, right? Let's go ahead and just do, do the math again. What is this width here? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let me do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's ten yellow lines. So that's ten. That's thirty. So again, that's thirty yellow lines horizontally, which is understanding of the entire completion of everything. That's what that's what that number translates to. The, he has the power over the science of completion, the understanding of everything. Based upon the numerics you see just at the base of this this image, this diagram. We're not even looking at the metanature, you know what I mean? And that metanature is just another layer of very great, powerful, um, cosmic uh, storytelling. Because a lot of this is about storytelling. And not so much to be just a parable. I mean, not a parable. That's the same thing as storytelling, right? And, and not so much as just uh, text uh, like um, instruction. The instruction is meant to be very well story told, okay? I think we're having a little fun here. We're going to get into some comedic headdress stuff now here. And this is where your brain is going to have to do its remembrance that you know what we're been brainwashed into we're not even brainwashed into but it's accept, accepting is because we weren't there no one of that time supposedly recalls right well okay let's go ahead and complete this cipher so what this uraeus or naja Let's go ahead and make this full screen. Uh, full screen. I think I gotta just remember the shortcut, right? It's like uh, fit to screen one, right? Command one. Yep. What was that command, guys? View. Uh, fit to screen zero. Okay, now that was zero. View. There was a way to go full screen. I remember. I wanted to see that aspect ratio, but anyway, this is big enough as long as you can see it. So, what is this dragon guy you're looking at? He's very much a dragon, okay? And he's a balanced dragon at that. He's the kind of dragon that did not possess legs and flew through the air. That is the dragon you were looking at right here. A very powerful dragon master. Now, the lineage was taught dragon mastery to be able to even earn the right to wear this headdress. And first and foremost, it has the hidden connotation or exaggerated understanding in common day as being a headdress that showed the unification of Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt. And yes, that's very much a great interpretation of this as well. The interpretation is multi-layered, but only done in that way because you'd say that Lower Egypt and Upper Egypt are the human body as well. Being that you have your higher self and your lower self. But either way... This is the mind state of a god king, a god pharaoh, who now has the very adept abilities to do things of the priest class in their world, okay? 
So if you notice the blue stripes, he has nine blue stripes at the crown, meaning completion. Okay, and then you have another set of nine blue stripes on this side and another set of nine blue stripes on this side also completing. So the completion is also not just from the crown, the completion is from the left brain to the completion of the right brain. And then here, the representation of that as manifestations of the vulture, which is the power of protection, and the cobra, the wisdom protection, coming from the balanced state of this triple completion. Because if the triple completion is a pineal gland, which these two objects on the uraeus represent. They represent a active pineal gland. This, this guy would not be able to don this mask if he had not activated his pineal gland or not activated. I avoid saying that, excuse me, if he was not a practitioner of his pineal gland. So, practitioner. So now that you have seen what the headdress is starting to try to convey, let's go more fun and have more fun with this thing. Now, what's the, you know, classical, you know, beard structure that we see there. I always have looked at that going to myself. Doesn't that look very much like a spine with vertebrae and everything? But I mean, in all honesty, just count it. Okay. And I forget, did I count that? I'm pretty sure I did, but it wasn't relevant to the, to the numbering system I wanted to talk about yet. But it's the spinal uh, cord in the spinal column. It is the Kundalini conduit being represented in a three-dimensional free space here as the mask is adorning whatever are the conduits for um, the very powerful spiritual entity, in, 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 in energy, excuse me, running through the body, okay? This is all external representations of inter internal anatomy and things in the body. That's really what a lot of this represents to you, okay? You have to think about this in that way because the story being told by this mask is just that deep and, and really revered that you're looking at a dragon king kundalini master who had the conduit power to ignite the two snake the snake and the vulture at the top of his head completing his crown in this golden aura okay and this naja <laughs> this snake god this this dragon god also had a heart so that's why this full breastplate is here the heart brain here is represented by eight now what eight did i count i counted the one two three four five six seven eight bands in the middle of the chest for the heart that's an eight banded building and destroying conduit that is where the true conduit between the lower gut brain and the heart brain and the top brain manifest a lot of their unique forces that are outside of the visible spectrum of even the tools man has today to really perceive things like auras and things like that because it's a magnetic field that is bouncing up and down the body right and so that heart brain eight right shown there shows all the different colors beautiful you know very much so representing the aura that shows off from the heart okay um and that person would be a master of heart connection and be able to reach out to everybody in the immediate vicinity if if need be via a heart message a heartfelt message okay and everybody should be able to receive it and kind of not even question it and they could do that with words or without words, but that was their, their another one of their gifts, okay? So then you also have, if we come out here, the uh, four bands of culture in their freedom. Because right now, that's the completion of their the, the chest. Like, this is the, the strength of the, the free culture that must be lived here. And, um, or is not just must be lived here, but is in control here uh, when you're this type of dragon god naja and you've mastered you know at the bottom of that your masculine and feminine being you've mastered it so the bottom of this breastplate has a blue and a red uh conjunction um of like almost like teeth almost like a zipper 
interlocking, right? And that's that's definitely an interpretation of, you know, hot and cold or positive and negative. And, you know, that's why masculine and feminine should never really be in this talk considered a person with genitals. Like, okay, that woman has a, a vagina and that man has a penis. No, no. Gender uh, positive in this case means just a spin of information and another spin of information. Okay? So, with this now, it's getting pretty deep. I really want to take you down your completion path to being more of a keeper of this type of information because it will begin to expand in your brain and start to resonate amongst our family. Because, you know, someone's got to be the keeper of these, these informations. Uh, it's not really a keeper, but it's Kepper. Hey, Kepper. And that, that HPR sound in here meant to develop, coming into being, or create, okay? And it has a be he, he was a god with a beetle on the top of his head, right? Like, I'm beginning to, to want to say, like, this must be some kind of powerful magician, you know what I mean? Even look at the Ankh in his other hand in the staff, you know what I mean? But, you know, this god, god is a, is a representation of that power in you, Okay as a being. It's the representation of that God symbol in you as a being. That's all it really is. To help you develop coming into being or create of your creation of yourself. Very, very simple, simple Egyptian storytelling. Another part of yourself is your Kippuri, your Horus, your inner light, your sun God in you that creates your eye where it's single in your body and your body's full of light and then you are a sun, solar energy giving off that ray, that, that energy from the top of your head like our buddy Horace was. Christ in, Christ, Christ in or anointed, right? On the head. So, a third eye powerful being. This is what Horus was. Um, you know, um, Kemper was also a very powerful magical being um, in, in, the, in the third eye realm, you know, so to speak. This is an internal being inside the, the mind, inside the brain. This is where the magic happened. This is where the priesthood got their, um, their training um, to break away from just everything having to be a chemical process okay in the brain because they knew of these chemical processes but in in the best way to describe them was to put them in caricatures of animals and human beings to show an alchemy expression of the own wild deeper science inside of the human body and how animalistic and human human it was at the same time I could have probably worded that better, but I'm really just getting at a overarching picture, looking at a perennial, you know, overarching thing of what comedic principle art, you know, our, our artwork was for. Our artwork was for magic because we wanted to make sure that the rule was not given to those who weren't ordained in the culture and not willing to be misusers of this okay so even my boy michael jackson mj what up my dude what up what up he's chilling yeah okay so the vibe was that you know to stop here if you don't want to go any further into these ancient mysteries of some of the information you've just seen because it's going to get pretty deep and a lot of the information is out here on the web for you to research on your own that you will be shown. But I'm going to be taking you down a deep rabbit hole and then pulling you back out with dope explanations so that you have the total, uh, not what is it, um, knowledge science, wisdom science, and understanding science in practice there's no reason for you not 
to be a magician of the mind after having heard what will be revealed beyond this step. Okay? And the reason why I'm telling you I know this is true is because just as true as the pyramids are tuned to frequencies and many things in Egypt are aligned to the design of our body proportionally using the Fibonacci sequence because everything grows very, very, every, everything grows very specifically in that pattern very well. I should have had a, a, like the, the slide of a, um, what is it called? Uh, the Nautilus shell here, but that's fine. You know, the whole idea is that the beauty of simplicity is all around us to be looked at and then decoded one time and not really been, have to get any deeper than that. And once you have that first original decoding, then there's nothing that your mind can't achieve. So pause this video, because this will be the next part coming up, which you're not ready for. Brain mysteries. You ready for some brain mysteries? I can't hear you. All right, brain mysteries. Here we go. Wow, look at this colorful chart. It's so beautiful. But let's be very um, swift about our understanding of this thing, okay? So in one, we have the visual area. Look at that. It's in the back of the brain. For sight, image recognition, and uh, image perception here in the back of our brain. So if you ever took an injury to the back of your head, you would not have that anymore, right? Two, right here in the middle. The association area for short-term short memory, equilibrium, which is your balance, and emotions, the temporal lobe. Number three, we have that right down the middle of the side of the brain, right down there in the middle of the side of the brain, crossing all those sections of the brain. And that is for the initiation of voluntary muscles. Voluntary, guys. What is a voluntary muscle? It's not your heart. Your heart is an involuntary muscle. So that's like your your bicep muscle. You know what I mean? All right. And then you have four, okay, called the muscles of speech, Bo Broca's area. I'm probably mispronouncing that, but I don't care. Four, that's where your speech center is, kind of like right here, not too far from the middle of your brain, but like more towards the front of the brain, okay? And then five, we have the auditory area right here right up kind of like right where your ears are located for hearing let's see anywhere else nope so you really see it's really on that only on that only on that side and in and, and that's kind of cool huh emotional area number six that is this fatty layer that sits right above this kind of like primitive looking thing but anyway um i'm pretty sure it's not but it's this layer, fatty layer that surrounds this whole thing right here, right? Okay, so, so it's the emotional area for pain, hunger, fight, flight, response. But it's this thing right here. It's the emotional area. You know, it's this the area that adrenaline probably hits. And this is the area, you know, all your hormones get affected by most. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Looking at this diagram, six. One to seven. Seven. Where are you at, number seven? Lucky seven is over there. He's like in the sandwiched in between your eyesight and something else. So he's the sensory association area. He's associated with sensory association between your eyesight and your sensory area, which is nine, your muscles and skin, your external feelings. So internal feelings and external feelings all in the sensory association, all all mushed together right there. Interesting. Very interesting. But then that leads into your motor control. So it's almost like it's almost like a whoop. The pathway goes here for you to actually act. Anyway, that's just me thinking out loud while we're looking at these numbers because we should keep going. Number ten. Uh, the summit somatosensory association area. So that's number 10, where you have the evaluation of weight, height, texture, texture, temperatures, etc. Uh, object recognition, very quick, so maybe you can read music very good from sight, I don't know. 
um, but that's your 10th area of your brain, which is still connected to that feelings area, all right up in the mushiness of the sight and the hearing. But anyway, so then you have the wrinkle, uh, wrinkles area, and that's for written and spoken language here in position 11, which is still surrounding all this stuff like for visuals and stuff like that. But, you know, it's coming out for your spoken and comprehension and written words, right? Okay. So we see that a lot of this centers around this area, right? Around this area, while there's a lot of other stuff for the external feelings of out here. But around this area, there's a lot of stuff for feelings and emotion. But anyway, so let's keep going. Then you have 12, um, a motor function area. It's above the air we go right there, that, that band right there, okay? And that's called your cerebral cortex. Ooh, that is cool. Cool. So your cerebral cortex... If that were ever hurt, ah, you know, you're going to lose some stuff. You're going to lose eye movement and your orientation and all that stuff is going to get a little, a little, little foggy. In fact, that probably could be hypnotized, right? Which that thing can get oof, all kinds of stuff messed with it. Then you have um, 13, your frontal lobe uh, for higher mental functioning. Concentration, planning, judgment, emotional expression, creativity, creativity, and inhibition. Inhibition. And In, say it with me. Inhibition. Inhibition. Number thirteen. Inhibition. That thing is big. That sucker is huge. That cerebral cortex, man. They don't. I mean, that frontal lobe. They don't tell you it's that big, though, do they? But the frontal lobe is pretty huge. Um, part of your brain. And um, it's look, it looks to me as if, like, if I were to go from the bottom of her brain and, like, loop myself around and end up in the front, that's the flow process the, inform the information takes from rising from within your spirit. Like, it's got to go through all that to hit the outside frontal, you know, higher mental function. So, it, like, bubbles from up inside you and then just, boom waves through your brain and boom you manifest start manifesting stuff but then you also have 14 the area number 14 for motor functions coordination movement balance equilibrium and posture which is a huge part called the cerebellum okay huge another part of the brain almost doesn't even have the same structures looking but look at why it's it's like right here almost like a parasite but underneath the brain sucking from whatever this post is like this whole thing looks like some kind of host and parasite idea, right? Anyway, I don't want to get too deep into that, but um, we'll get deep into it later. That's what this lecture is for. So the quickening idea here is that we kind of just broke down what you can see from this diagram on, you know, things working inside of our body, right? We have a brain stem, um, we have a cerebellum. We have optical lobe, we have the partial lobes, inner lobes, and all these inner lobes tied into visual sound and auditory reception and, and reading and writing. And then your cerebral cortex, if you remember again, was for motor eye movement, but uh, three being really good was for vo uh, voluntary muscles, uh, like moving your, your muscles to lift something, connected to your cerebral cortex, which is used for eye movement and orientation so that has to correspond together these two must communicate very fast right but the eyes optical lobe is way back there they say anyway i'm gonna keep going with this anyway i'm having fun fun so uh before you know the understanding of the european knowledge of this there was a ancient understanding of this um through the sciences that had been re-understood after the fall that we had gotten to to give us this structure in our brain, in our mind, in our soul capturing system. That's what they call it. Kind of like our battery plug, you know, the thing that goes into the outlet to charge our battery. You might have a hit of hit to that. Yeah, definitely. That's what your brain is kind of like. It's like it's like plugged into something. You know what I mean? Just like your heart is plugged into something, it's a vortex of energy. And here, there's a vortex of energy circulating around our heads. That is just out of the perception of tools that I'm telling you that, you know, man has right now. 
and this vortex of energy is the ripple that causes a lot of things in the collective part of our cultures. Well, one of the things in our culture was, we talked about Horus right now in our collective culture, being inside of you. Well, you're looking at him. There he is. Dang it. That parasite looking thing. Why is there an eye of horse right there in your brain? And what does it describe to you? Well, what it should describe to you is that you have the pathways, okay, to receive information across these ridges of the brain, okay? And this information helps you send your spinal cord into the right places at the right time. And that that energy coming up to the spinal cord pushes back and creates a two-way circuit now where your motor functions and everything are all be able to move without action, without, I mean, without thought, through, through a, a very conductive process of something a lot deeper or something a lot, a lot simpler than the brain structure we see drawn here. But in, in the same complicated manner, I, be, I wouldn't even... Anyway, to not dispute that, go research on your own. Here's some homework. The points of the eye here, okay? And, and the breakdown mathematically of what this number is, because this is a beautiful number when you go look at it as well. But I'm glad I actually kind of leaving that out of this because I, I did put that in my notes to review and said, you know what, I won't, I won't tell you what that is. You can go find that out for yourself and that gives you some things to think about in this lecture. So now just notice that the Egyptians had drawn it so precise, though, like even this part here curls into a very um, important part of the brain, which is f for handling that kind of sequencing, which is the the coordination of your entire being. So that means it's gotta be in the Fibonacci sequence there. You know what I mean? Like that's that's the coordination of your entire being is to grow in that and move in that and live in that. Excuse me, that's inevitable. So um, the movement of our body through space and time is kind of represented here in the eye of force in our brain. Now, what they're not telling you in this diagram, which is kind of weird because they're showing us this beautiful pituitary gland here in the midbrain, right? And that's the one that regulates, you know, growth, I'm not growth, sorry, pet hormones. So, you know, if you're ever going to have, you know, a, um, any kind of growth spurt, you know, your pituitary gland is going to help get the right hormone started, fire up your growth. Um, it's going to get the adrenaline started going. It's It's the... It's the gland that makes sure we get going um, with our hormones. Now, there's another gland there that's for that, and that's the pineal gland. And um, it's just now behind the eye of forest there. But you know, right there was a structure, I can go back, that was right there. But they didn't even label it. They just... They just left it alone in this di in this diagram that I grabbed right off the internet. Like, why are they leaving that alone? Why why are they leaving that alone? I mean, what's the point of that? But you know why? I mean, it's not like it's hidden in every diagram, but just in this specific one, it's called the unknown to them. They don't want to talk about what this actually breaks down to being, and it's an eye. It has in the brain uh, the same. Uh, rods and cones that you have in these structures that are outside of the brain in two glob, you know, ob, 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 circular globular objects, globular, globular, thank you, objects, that would be somewhere right around there. And those are your eyes, you know what I mean? Sitting right in front of the brain with a nerve that would connect all the way here to boom, your optic nerve hitting the side of your brain to pass through the light. Anyway, passing through this area to send that information to your optic visual area, okay? So, what's really going on here is your eyes are like a gateway to program this thing here and then have it interpreted here. So, 
um, basically this internal light source receiver camera functioning eye thing here is allowing for the pass through of another eye inside of the brain which is more conducive to the centering of your energies that roll up and down your spine even more conducive to being close to these hormone centers we this is your brain this is really who you are this is your epicenter this is your plug into the spiritual chemical universe and here's where your soul sits your soul or the seed of your soul is what they would call it because this is your entire personality makeup okay uh, in this object called the pineal gland um, and it's coming through a light spark that is connected to the wave field that is around your brain now you are humming at that frequency it is humming at that frequency you might not be able to hear it that's fine at one point you, you were supposed to hear it so that you could know certain things that were happening in the brain, um, especially according to balancing and um, auditory system. So anyway, it can trust me, it can pick up auditorials, auditory just as well because the auditory area is right there. Okay, all right. So it's vibrating at a great frequency if you are an awakened being like we saw the guy with the, uh, you know, um, cobra headdress on right that cobra headdress but this guy this this person w was activating this and utilizing this all the time taking no breaks and being very very cunning about how they would use it even if that probably wasn't what i guess is written so well and translated across in the stories but you know um to where this that to wear that and don that crown meant to do this part of your brain the most justice that it needs meaning that you connected with this the, the hardest this is the closest you wanted to be to god okay in any time in your life you never wanted to be outside of this part of your brain having to deal with this part of your brain all the time which is where you have higher mental functions of concentration planning judgment emotional expression creativity and inhibitions okay if you're down here they didn't even give it. They don't even know what it does. But I'm telling you what it is. It's you. <laughs> and then you're surrounded by all this that gets programmed. You're surrounded by all this stuff that gets programmed from this receiving programming and sending it out to this stuff. So when your pineal gland is programmed right, you occupy it and nothing that even really comes in through this visual part changes the way that really sends information out here. Because you have now control over it, you're not unmindful of it, you have awares of it, and awares of it automatically gives you the power of perception over it. But you have to be awares of it to actually have the power of perception over it. Okay, If your eye is single enough, and you can understand that, you'll be more perceptive of it, and you'll look to it. And that's pretty awesome when you think about it that they even thought about, you know, describing a lot of their gods as brain functions. So this next one was the, what, the beetle god, right? This is the beetle god. This is his beetle again, adornment in a nice, you know, again, uh, some kind of jewelry here. But look, it's holding the sun. Right, a sun disc, that's what they said used to say, or it's really a dung beetle, so it's holding dung. It's shit. <laughs> and here inside is like it's represented the, the body, the strength of this beetle is in its body and in its appendages, these two legs and the other legs, and then the wings are so beautifully colored, but they're balanced. They're balanced in count. I'm sure this count comes out to a balanced number. Um, because this is the representation of the cerebellum and um I'm sorry, but the, the two lobes of the brain, look, okay? The left lobe and the right lobe. The left lobe and the right lobe, right? And um, in the deeper alchemy of it, yes, there's something that was already not being discussed here, and that was the squiggly-looking olfactory things here, right? 
olfactory and the optic what are they where why aren't they really like looking like a part of the brain they almost look like a creature in the brain huh so your optic and your olfactory kind of look like the you know the, the, the parts of the parts of the beetle that are just missing and then they go into this sun disc or shit center <laughs> the dung and the dung center is where you're picking up you know and, and renewing yourself every time if you can so if you can renew your higher mental functions every day if you can kind of cleanse this part of your brain your solar disc every day through the use of this more powerfully which is your optic nerve obviously connected to this pineal nerve, you know gland here and your olfactory being the, uh, the senses of you know the smells in that in that section very much are tied to the memory that this creature here receives okay this ancient creature right here bro he likes the smells he likes the optics he likes the smells these are the things that have really trained this creature in your in our bodies over time okay this one specific creature in our body has been trained in the, in that mastery so it's time perception and, and life perception is all really tied to those things and it loves recalling this information so it will store a lot of this stuff and give you the ability to redream some of its favorite things that it's been programmed with um, from time to time and when i say its favorite things i mean fears hates things that will destroy you <laughs> dreams of happiness joy peace crazy adventures things that would make you excited but this part of your brain is a creature a beetle a dung beetle it will roll that shit uphill baby if you let it okay but you have to go reprogram your midbrain to not be psychically bombarded by um the blockaging of renewing your shit every day and getting that shit out of the frontal lobe because the higher mental functions only really work great enough for you to perceive what's happening internally when you've cleansed internally better. When you've gotten the the areas of number eight, you know, the olfactory area for smelling better. Um, and the, um, and the what was the other section over here? Uh, number two. So uh, short-term memory, right? What I was telling you about, it stores little things here. Because so, it, it, it wants this stuff here to then enter some some in some way some long term but it's gonna have to dream about it toward to enter long term so it it's gonna bathe itself in dreams to create some kind of long term connection to many things nightmares perfect the example you know what i mean how many of you have nightmares anyway it's okay but how many of you have great dreams too you know what i'm saying so is that part of your programming is that something that you know comes from internal source yes is it also your connection to everything in the in the cosmic plug center that this this object in our head is yes because you know it's got to deal with the other creatures in the body too you know what i mean the heart and the gut you know and 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 the the organ for sex it's got to deal with that it's got to deal with all of that just as much as they have to deal with it but it more being of sound organized principles around all of those other you know creatures in the body anyway right so the higher selves okay this higher self of you has got to pay more attention to this big structure of you inside of you just as much as you pay attention to your gut you must pay attention to this and it likes to bathe itself in good sound so one of the things that really makes this really awesome is when you go look at your temporal lobe and how close it is to um, five which is uh, auditory right if you really want to improve short-term memory and almost become um, long-term memory cre quickly creative uh, you want to tie it to your auditory and your visual visual area from the midbrain of whew, wow this is this is so true it's so wild you want to tie it into that because the auditory area here will automatically 
give this this being right here the ability to say hey look i'm going to do some internal talk that that internal talk we all do to ourselves over and over and over and over again putting it into the short-term memory and in the short-term memory is where i want you to drop it into the optical lobe later on so we can have some dreams about it later tonight anyway so paths to having better dreams are for one optimizing this part of the computer part of our body okay um this is a very powerful for psychics in mystics and astral travelers because this part of your ancient body is given back to when we were the very simple aquatic powerful beings from another planet and utilize this part more okay like this thing would have probably, I guess, circumferenced and, 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 and gotten rid of a lot of the frontal part of the lobe here. This part, you know, you know what I mean? There would have been this, even if it would have been as thick, sorry, this would have been at least just twice that. It would have been inside of this area here in the range of number six, where you actually have the emotional area for pain, hunger, flight, fight or flight response. So right outside of here, again, is your ability to instantly talk to your body from your internal self okay and you can start your internal self's more regulation by understanding that it's there and what it really is it's your horse it is your christ center if you are not communicating with your christ center you are you are dealing with all the things of the world that have programmed your brain and are saturating all these other functions of your brain but that center right there should know itself if it does not know itself that's where you done fucked up I'm just playing. But that's where you need to start. And the in the first part of it is to start it at a very earnest part of your understanding of why it's connected into the body in general. Um, it's there to help you manifest very good motor functioning at the blink of a dime. Um, sort of like a martial artist would have very good reaction time um, from almost seemingly nowhere being able to see, have an eye in the back of their head. Like Bruce Lee did. Well, that's why that third eye draw is drawn that way to represent this part of our brain. And it's succinctly doing exactly what the metaphysics of the story say it's going to do. And then the same thing is for our dung beetle in our brain from the bottom. When the Egyptians drew her and drew this, this god, they knew that this is the functionality of how the information is flowing in the brain from front to back. Okay, I mean from from back to front, and the information going from back to front is very much has to be cleansed and cleaned because you don't want to that you don't want to have that dung be there forever. You're gonna you know eat it eventually, renew it, go get some new dung and roll it uphill. You know what I mean? But to to absorb rhetoric removes you from creativity it removes you from emotional expression it removes you from concentration to be stuck in a rhetorical persona does this too rhetorical in anything reduces that 13th part of the brain the higher mental functions into a programmed individual okay and you want to deprogram your frontal lobe at the end of the day if you are trying to achieve full pineal gland manifestations okay so we're working on deprogramming center 13 because we want to be forever 13 where we have a young mind refreshed and renewed every day like you know in closing of this lecture i'll say to achieve really great dreams when i was a boy a young shaman boy um i pick up my like favorite toy and i'd be like you know tonight i want to be a gundam ship i want to be a gundam ship does that make sense i want to be one of these here i'm gonna i'm gonna get the the screen right i want to be one of these i want to be a little gundam you know what i mean and in being this gundam i'd put it under my pillow like the tooth fairy coming or something to deliver me a dream about being in the gundam but what it did was it did allow me to visualize as it holding onto it underneath my pillow, the shape of it, the, the complex parts of it, and what I wanted to see and sense in my, 
in my night you know visions because i knew they were coming as a young boy but i wanted to purposely see if just being so close to the object would cause me to dream that i was in the object and sure enough i'd have dreams of being in gundam battles and in those big mechs and being able to fly across japan and do all these great crazy things with my buddy um, Mike at the time. I mean, I, my dreams as a boy were invincibilities, powers, and ninja, ninjutsu powers, you know, very much Naruto. I was Naruto as a boy. I, I, I flew through trees at the speed that, you know, the speed bikes in Star Wars fly through trees in my dreams. Um, there was nothing I didn't do in my dreams that was like magical and, and mo movie finessed with special effects and all, all kinds of stuff. But that's all, all of my life. It's been that way. When I did have nightmares, they weren't even reoccurring, but they were deep enough to show me like mm, a horror of something where I was in place of it. And, and, and it already now I've gone through, I've gone through that with something a very deep or understanding. Um, and the, 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 the transfer, the reason why this realm exists is because of these structures we've just been looking at in the brain. The reason this perception is even around is because these ancient structures in the brain connected us to our solar beings. Our solar beings are only resonating at this very, very unique frequency and want to inhabit some DNA and are programming through epigenetics from that center the DNA of, of the being that it's inhabiting right now. So this is very important to your future and your children because they will receive the next set of epi epigenetic genes you program. Currently, f mentally, permanently in the future, it will be a part of their makeup until they were to actually learn that there's a way to encode their own or start recoding their own because you can either do it from a child or do it later on as an adult but you're going to take the time to take your epigenetics and push a new narrative into your DNA that it was not being fed before. And that is that there's an unlimited potential to everything. And when you have that as a central mindset, instead of being limited by money and the chains of perception of that and the chains of perception of, um, somebody else's achievement of money making them your higher in this planet then that is also going to leave you and you're going to not even perceive that because it cannot be perceived in a real re in a real reality that's just not perceived it's not perceivable but in the construct that my the rest of my soft brain must understand and decode i have to live in that false world as well with you we all do and so does our brains and that's what our brains are doing they have adapted to a holographic state of being so in the holographic state you know there's some things that really have to be washed every day to reachieve a new evolution of the self and that's what i'm glad we're all working towards by listening to these smack dab sessions especially this one where i wanted to get you right into your God state, your guardian Asur, your guide to your ancient rites of death, incarnation, and new life, your book of life, your ancient book of life, why you have a deeper connection to yourself than you do, right? Now. Don't, you don't have, but you should. Why you should be the light, why there should be such a bright light in this, in your, from yourself that it starts to change the outside of you in such a way that manifestation of that happens to where your body begins to give you powerful signals that you are now in charge of your body and the priesthood who is again trained us all through the indoctrination of the words in english spanish latin um the ones that broke off from the other true mystical languages have now pretty much concatenated life into an overarching story that benefits 
the way it's worded in English for them better. So we must do our best to break down English and Edamam, you know, as you know, one of the uh, the masters has been talking, teaching uh, earlier tonight. I was listening to, um, you know, the Edamam of things. But in my world, yes, yeah, go go. I also want to just recast words because words again are a spell that my brain will interpret into a picture format, like here on the right in the meta nature, and give me some kind of decoding later on in my soft part of my brain over here for short-term memory to be utilized in my dream state. So I want to have a real guide practice on how to take control of that physical process of my body because once I do, I'm more closer to my guardian, the true side of me that I know I can live. You know what I mean? And with that said, I thank you for joining me on this smack dab session. I will go deeper into these lectures um, again and break down more number systems. So if you really like this kind of lecture system, you know, or, or this breakdown of knowledge, don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe as well if you like the sound of my voice, and I'll catch you in the next lecture.